So at the time that I'm doing this video, we recently got an update to Studio One being version 5.2. And along with 5.2 came a major, major improvement upon the previous generation of the key switch articulation editor that was introduced. Now being referred to as sound variations because it's a lot more than just a key switch articulation editor. It does a lot of different things and I, I think they have some big plans for it down the road as well. In order to kind of showcase this, what I wanted to do is update some of my presets on one of my favorite Presence XT instruments that I have. Classic Finger Production. This is an instrument that was created by E-Instruments and it runs within Presence XT. This is something I've had for a while now. Uh, you can see over here the preset was created basically in 2015. So this is now six years old at the time that I'm doing this video. Also worth mentioning that at the time that this instrument was created, Presence XT didn't natively support key switches. So what they've done here is they've basically uh, scripted these key switches into this instrument. Now, if we go to a later version of something, like for example, PSO, and I drag this over, notice that we have this red bar that's indicated over here. And as I switch through these different key switches, you can see that it's updating over here. And in addition to that, because this is obviously a native Personas instrument, these key switches, I don't even have to open up the instrument to trigger anything. I can actually choose exactly which key switch I want directly from the sound variations drop down menu here. Okay, I'm gonna remove this track and instrument. Let's just extend this out a little bit more so I can see the name. This has been one of my go-to instruments. If I just needed like a very basic bass guitar, I would basically just load this up, but one of the things that was kind of frustrating for me is I would always forget which uh, key switches were for which articulation. So you can see C0 is open, C sharp zero open legato within a fourth interval, D0 is open, D sharp zero dead notes, so on and so forth. But now that we have the sound variations editor and we have the ability to basically create presets and also we can embed the sound variation presets into the actual presets this is a really welcomed addition for me so i've already done a little bit of legwork full disclosure ahead of time if i open up the sound variations preset i'm going to just scroll to my presets and if i choose e instruments e bass i basically can load the sound variation preset that goes with this particular patch so Let's do that really, really quickly. The minute I load this, you'll notice that I basically just copied the text over here. And we'll open this up one more time so that it's on top. If I move this over, let's kind of line these up side by side. And I'm just basically borrowing exactly what was stated over here. So we have C0 equals open, and then we have C sharp zero open legato within a fourth interval. So now that I've created these, it's very easy for me to simply update these presets themselves. And then this preset becomes embedded in this preset. Before we do that though, let me close these windows and let's go over to, let's click this actual preset, the one that I dragged and dropped in. Notice it says the date it was modified and who it was created by. Now that I've embedded this preset in the sound variation preset, I can basically just choose to update the preset over here and now that I've updated this preset, let's close this. Um, you don't have to always do this, but I always do it just a good habit to get into is I can re-index my presets. And then the minute I do that, I'm gonna go back to this tab over here, classic finger production. Notice now that it says when it was modified and who it was created by. Also, one other thing to point out is if we show in Finder, these presets that are included in this sound set, they're embedded or encapsulated in the actual sound set that makes up this instrument right over here. So now I'm going to just close this window. Now, if I go over to this one that I've created myself, I've just updated this and I click show in Finder, notice that this has created folders in the proper file path. So this preset is actually referencing a new user preset that I've created. Now, if I right click, remove track and instrument, and I drag this in from scratch now, what ends up happening is that the sound variations are embedded directly within this preset. Now that's a huge win for me because what that means is that I can right away just open up this instrument, scroll over to my open articulation, start programming, and then if I wanna do anything different, it's very easy for me to use the sound variations. 
Also, there's lots of content that's already been covered by people who have much more authority to speak on this topic than I do myself. But also worth mentioning, it's not that hard to set up basic presets for third-party instruments. In the original video that I did, which I'm going to make sure that I link to in the info description above, that still very much stands true. So let's head over to Classic Pick Production, and I'm going to drag and drop this in. And now, if I was doing this from scratch, it'd be very easy. You just click this wrench icon, and then you're basically just looking to create new variations, and I'm looking to match the name and also the pitch. So let's just do a couple. C0 open, C sharp 0 open legato within a fourth. If I move this over here, click new variation, I'm just going to click open. I'm going to manually type in the actual um, keys over here. Now, once you do the first one, if I click new variation, notice that it automatically increments in individual semitones, and then it's just a matter of copying the actual name. So this one here would be open legato within a fourth, and then this one over here, D0 would be mute, and I can go new variation again, and so on and so forth. Now, once you have that done, it's just a matter of clicking the store preset option, giving this a name, it makes the most sense for the name to copy the actual name of the preset or the patch that you're working with. You can give it a description if you want. So I could say a sound variation preset for e, e instruments e bass. And then in terms of subfolders, if you already have subfolders that are created, you can choose one of those subfolders. Uh, and if you don't have any subfolders that are created, you just single click, type in something, and it will create that subfolder for you. That being said, I've already done this work, so I'm just going to choose classic pick production. This now has the preset that I wish to be embedded. And then it's just a matter of clicking this over here, updating this preset. And now the classic pick production preset, if I choose this, notice that it says the actual time and the date and who it's created by. So I kind of have peace of mind knowing that this is the proper preset. Now, if I drag and drop this in, what should happen is that it loads the preset from Presence XT, which I haven't changed at all, and then embedded within that preset is the sound variation preset. So this makes this instrument in particular instantly 10 times more usable for me because now if I wanted to do things like, for example, I wanted to transpose in real time, I have peace of mind knowing that those key switch or those sound variation presets, they're kind of filtered away separately from all the note data. And I could go about using this instrument and anytime I want to use it, I know that it's going to have uh, all of the proper things embedded into it. Now, really quickly, because I want to do all of these, I've created those presets, but I haven't yet updated my presets. So it's just a simple matter of choosing them from my drop down menu. This one is vintage finger production. Now that that's chosen, I'm just going to click here. I will update this preset. And last but not least, the last one I want to use is vintage uh, pick production. This is going to load the actual instrument, and I'm just going to choose this wrench icon, we'll go to my E instruments, vintage pick production, and now I'm going to update this one. And now I have just updated all of my presets. So if I click any one of these base level presets, you'll notice it now says my name with today's date, uh, the production one, that one works, the classic pick and classic finger. Okay, basically the way that this works is now all of these are embedded directly into these presets and any time that I'm using these in the future, instead of me having to load the instrument and then go into my sound variations and load the preset, if I'm using one of these, whoops, I accidentally chose the performance one. I haven't done anything for those because the performance one doesn't actually have uh, presets. It just has a different ways of performing will trigger these different articulations. So that's not what I want. But for example, this one, classic pick production, drag and drop this in, brings in the preset, and it is automatically good to go. Now, with respect to the instrument plus effects one, for this one, it uses the exact same key switch preset or sound variation preset. But the one thing that's different is it's also going to load a very basic effects chain that was created by E Instruments. Now, the thing to point out over here is that the key switches that are happening here, they are the exact same. So if I wanted to do this one as well, 
It'd be very easy for me to go into my sound variation presets. I need to choose classic finger production because it's going to have the exact same sound variation preset in terms of all of this information. And then I'm just going to click over here and I will update this preset as well. So now basically what ends up happening is that I would go and just kind of rinse and repeat for all of the ones that I wanted to do. You don't always have to re-index the presets, but I tend to do that just as kind of a safety measure so that it updates everything. And then in my instruments tab, now I know that my classic finger production effects, I've updated this one as well. So the next time I drag and drop this in, it will automatically have the full entire effects chain, which in this case happens to be Ampire and then we have a Pro EQ, and then we have a compressor. Uh, it will load that in addition to the sound variation preset that's needed for this instrument. Now, the other really cool thing about 5.2 and the updated sound variations is that in certain third-party instruments that support this feature, these will actually show up and you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to create or download any sound variation presets in certain third-party instruments, and I really hope that this list grows quite significantly. These are all just reported to the DAW, so you just drag and drop anything in, and you don't even have to load a Studio One native preset in some cases, these will just automatically be distributed. They will automatically show up in the sound variations presets. You can choose these directly from the editor. If the track is selected, I can choose these different ones over here. And another thing to point out is that if the editor is closed, but your track inspector is open, you can see that we now have this new area in terms of the active sound variation. And I could just choose a different one. So if I didn't want to open up the editor and I didn't want to choose those manually, I could just choose anything here and say, okay, I want this to be harmonics. And now this instrument is going to be playing the harmonics version. And if I wanted to choose, for example, dead notes, now this instrument is choosing dead notes or plain dead notes. Huge improvement, two thumbs up for me. I can't wait to see where sound variations go with respect to where Persona sees this going down the line. I also am really excited and fingers are crossed that a lot of third-party developers of amazing virtual instruments will get on board with this and start supporting this feature so that these sound variation presets will just natively display themselves in the editor and be available without us having to create these presets. Also, now I'm happy that my bread and butter go-to electric bass virtual instruments that I use all the time, I no longer have to fumble about to choose the key switch. It just automatically is going to work the minute I drag and drop it in. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.